Hi, this is Eric with the Republic Tiger Track Committee. I'm going to go over just a few things to make this uh, process a little easier for you first timers tomorrow. Ideally, um, you will pick up your packet Friday uh, between 12 and 7 at Ultramax Sports. When you do that, you'll get your race number, your t-shirt, all the extra little goodies, and um, make sure you have that all done before race day. When you come to packet pickup, you'll need to bring your driver's license or some sort of, you know, military ID, something, some sort of ID that's valid. And then, um, if you don't have an ID, you can't race. So you got to bring the ID. It's for insurance purposes. <clears throat> if you're a USA Triathlon member, you don't have to pay the one-day insurance fee. If you're not a member, it's a $12 fee. So make sure you have that paid. If you didn't pay it with your entry, then we'll. We'll have you pay it when you pick up your packet. And again, that just covers your insurance. You don't want to, ideally, you don't want to be picking up your packet on race morning because um, there's going to be a long line. So when you drive in on race morning, uh, you're going to, you can see my mouse here on the top right, you're going to drive in off of, uh, I believe it's Lynn Street, and then drive around um, the north end of the park and then park in the event parking lot here on the west, uh, west side, northwest side of the park. And then you'll get your bike and everything out, and you'll walk it down this road. And when you get about right here on the road, about approximately where the finish line is, we'll have a table set up for check-in. If you've already got your, your bib number and everything, um, you can just show your bib number to our body markers. They'll write your race number on you and your age on your calf um, so everybody knows everybody else's divisions. And then you'll go set up your bike in the transition area. If you've not picked up your packet yet, um, you'll need to stop in this really long line and get your packet. Again, make sure you have your ID and everything. Once you've done that, you'll get body marked and go to the transition area. A pretty common question is how do I set up my transition? So this is a nice picture showing um, uh, what you'll find in the transition area. Normally you'll find these racks set up and there'll be a lot of racks and our racks look just like this, they're very similar. And you'll hang your bike either by your handlebars or by the seat. You'll have a little bit of space on the ground that you can set out all your stuff that you'll need. Most people will tend to use a throw down a towel and they'll just put everything that they're going to need in the race in order of that they're going to need it. Now you notice on this particular picture it shows that they have designated racks for certain genders and ages. We will not have that tomorrow. It's first come first serve. So when you get there just set up wherever. We're going to aim for six back bikes per rack so you want to make sure that you're not taking up too much room. Make sure you don't move somebody else's bike. Just always just kind of use good etiquette. So, um, you know, you put your, imagine you just got done swimming and you're approaching your bike in the race. What are you going to need first? Well, probably going to need your bike shoes or any kind of shoe you're wearing. Socks maybe. Definitely going to need your helmet. Helmets are mandatory. Um, sunglasses possibly. Maybe you have a bottle of water that you want to sip on the ground or something that you want to take with you, food. Um, you, know, you can imagine that you would go do your bike ride and you come back, well, what are you going to need next? Maybe a different shoe, maybe a running shoe, maybe a visor. Um, the other thing you make sure, you're going to need to make sure you have your race belt or um, some way of attaching your number to the front of your body. It has to be on the front of your body on the run. This person looks like they have a race belt hanging um, off their bars so they can put that on when they start the bike and then when they start the run they don't have to worry about forgetting it. Again, on the run you have to have your race number on the front of your body. You can pin it if you want. Most people find that a, a race belt, this is an elastic belt, which it pins on, is a lot easier. So we recommend using that if you have the opportunity to buy one. Okay, back to transition area. We'll have a couple people helping you out, helping you set up your transition. This is a lot of first timers in this race, so we'd, we want to be there for you. <clears throat> Once you've set up your transition area, then you can walk to the pool. And uh, when you walk to the pool, we will have um, some race numbers on the deck, or excuse me, um, some signage on the deck that says times. And it'll say four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minute, nine minute, ten minute, all the way to 12, 13 minutes. What that indicates is how fast you're going to swim this 300 yard swim. So if you're a really fast swimmer, you'll stand on the four minute, five minute line. Um, if you're slower, you'll stand in one of the slower lines. You should have swam tested yourself swimming 300 yards in practice so you should know how long it's going to take you on race day and the reason why that that is important is because this is a snake swim 
That means when we start, you know, this line of people here, this person starts first, they cross the mat to start their time, because you're wearing a timing chip on your ankle. You get in the water feet first, and you swim down, swim down on the right hand side of the lane, and you come back on the other side of the lane, still, still inside the lanes, same lane, so two way traffic in the lane, under the rope, down and back, under the rope, down and back, etc. Because we have to put a lot of people in the water, we can't dilly dally around, so we do every 15 seconds a new person. If you state an accurate time and you line up, and we all line up accurately, nobody will pass anybody else. You have a little bit of leeway with that 15 second bumper, so you can swim a little slower, a little faster than you thought, but you gotta be real accurate. If you do catch somebody in the race, tap their feet several times, and they should, they should uh, stop, squeeze to the right, and let you pass. As soon as you pass, they can get right on your feet again and swim right in your wake, because there's a big advantage to drafting. If you are swimming and somebody taps your feet several times, do the same. Let them go by. People who are um, holding, up, holding up the line, they have several, there's several people behind you in the water, we'll have, we'll have a volunteer on the deck. There's me last year. Um, pulling you to the side and letting people go f behind you that you're holding up. And so um, we'll, we'll help make sure that, these, that we don't have too much of a, a, a line going on in the pool. Um, so that's how you do the snake swim. Back to um, back to getting in line. When you get there, you'll stand in the in the area closest to what you're where you'll swim, next to the sign. And then as a as the race time approaches, we'll do a pre-race meeting here on the deck. We'll have loudspeaker and everything. Go over all last minute questions, the rules, etc. And then we'll walk this fastest swim group. Probably be the four minute swimmers, three or four minute swimmers.